We do have show notes. We do have show notes. And to be fair, the Titans have a lot to share with us as well, of which they have been, and nobody likes it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know which Titans are going to have a worse year. (laughs) The Tennessee Titans or these guys. So anyway. Oh, sad. Yeah, didn't their freaking QB, they just drafted the rookie, get like freaking an ACL tear? In practice, or am I thinking of a different team? I think you're thinking of a different team. That's the Browns, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm an Eagles fan, so I don't really pay much attention to teams that are not the Eagles, but at this point in the season. But um, yeah, uh, I'm a Niners fan, so supposedly I don't pay attention unless we're good. So, you know, it goes both ways. (laughs) Yeah, you guys will be good, so you're good. Right? (laughs) That said, the Giants suck. The baseball team, not the football team. Yeah. (laughs) We well, you won today. Yeah. You won today. And speaking of sports, this is episode 247, August 15th of 2024. 3309. 3, 9. 12? I don't know. I've had a rough day. It's okay. I'm time blind, so I'll just believe you, anyways. And this yes. is the Loose Screws Podcast. <laughs> To a great start. <laughs> to be fair, that's that's our normal starts around here. If yeah. people don't know that by now, welcome to the podcast. And if you are a um, listener that listens regularly, we're sorry again. <laughs> but we're going to do that thing where we go around the table, see how everyone's been doing this week. And I'm going to start with Commander Blooming Wind. Alrighty, well, thank you. Yeah, so it's it's been an interesting week to say the least. So um, everybody's favorite Cavalier, King Charles Spaniel, the official mascot of the Loose Screws Network, my beloved dog Brick, um, went to the cardiologist today. Yes, they have dog cardiologists, and it's because he had a murmur. And Cavaliers have mi- mitral valve disease, which usually eventually takes them from this earth. <clears throat> and he's about twelve years old. So his doctor, his vet heard the murmur and said, okay, well, we're going to have him go to the vet, uh, the, to the cardiology vet. So I'm like, okay, sure. So today was his appointment. So I take him and, you know, the, the, the doctor sees him, does the echocardiogram and comes back in the room with a iPad and a bottle of pills. And I'm thinking, oh, crap. Uh, oh. And so, yeah. So she said that he has a grade four murmur out of six which is pretty significant and pretty loud. Um, but he looks like a million bucks, which he really does because he's quite the handsomest one-eyed cavalier in the known universe. Of course, um, he's the brick father. He is, brick, he is the brick father. So anyway, so she basically said that he has to go on two medications. Um, he should probably be good for about a year and a half. And then, hope, and then unfortunately, he'll be probably developing congestive heart failure at that point. We'll have to go on a water pill for a little while. And then, unfortunately, that is that. Hopefully, that takes him to age 15, which is damn good for a Cavalier. Um, yeah. But anyway, so but anyway, so that was his week. Um, and then uh, kids went back to school. Um, and for all of our older pilots, my uh, son, who is quite awesome, uh, was signed up for AB Calc. And he has this new AB Calc teacher. And she's new to the school. And so he comes home yesterday completely horrified and terrified. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, you're not going to believe this. The teacher will now will not let us do test corrections as a way of uh, getting extra points on our test. And so if we take the test and we do bad, we do bad. And it's 75% <laughs> of our grade. And so (laughs) just so everyone knows what test corrections are, basically what happens is nowadays with a lot of kids, with a lot of schools, you know, you take the test, let's say you get an 80, you can go back and redo the problems, learn from your mistakes, and you won't get a hundred for correcting them, but you'll get half of the work. So you'll go up from an 80 to a 90 on that test. I guess, you know, it's teach these kids, you can learn from your mistakes and you know, as Batman said, why do we fall down so we can learn to get it back up again? Or it was Thomas Wayne. It wasn't Bruce Wayne. But anyway, so he was like horrified and he's telling me this. And I said, so it's like how I did math, except it was, a, 
And he's like, you are not helping. And I was like, yeah, as someone born in 81, I'm regrettably on your side on this. Believe me. Yeah. So this, so then I take it to the Twitter and, you know, like I would say Gen X Twitter was just like, holy crap. Half of them were like, can you explain this to me? And then yeah. the other half were like, <laughs> you know, this is, you know, this, they're like, you know, this is, you know, this is kind of nuts. Like, you know, we went through the crucible of math and science. It's like, if you were wrong, you were wrong. And that was it. So yep. uh, anyway, so that was, <laughs> that was his week. And then in game, I downloaded Steam, created an account. All and right. Redownloaded Elite Dangerous onto said account and then bought ARCs. And now I have <laughs> enough ARCs to get a T8. But I've not had time to buy a T8. Welcome so to I, actually being a PC gamer now, my friend. Well, thank you. And uh, I might download that free Warframe thing everyone's talking about. But um, yeah, that was the shot. Yeah, that and, you know, you know, fighting in the war in V2616 Signy has been my entire thing. I did fly with tracks. Like, he nice. was like, that was wild. It was like, so he was taking his Phantom or his, um, not his Phantom, his python mark ii out for a test drive in one of the czs and i was headed to the same cz for yeah just to work the war and it was just like wow trax is here and uh we had a good time except there was something funky with the server where we couldn't link up link up uh our, as a team or something like we kept trying and it wasn't sticking it was really weird but was that know, the TFG. same night he was having all those random disconnect issues yes it was and uh Okay. And one of my friends, one of our other friends, a guy named Punjabi, who occasionally visits our squadron, he uh, had the same problems too. So there was something afoot at the Circle K the other night, but who knows what it was. So I've talked enough for my week. So let's hear about everybody else's week. All righty. I'm actually sad Trax isn't here because I so want to hear him talk about the Python Mark II. And quick aside before we go to Oblivious. I am just looking at all the random liveries that are available for the T10. I have a lot of them, but there's one I'd never noticed before. It's the turbulence paint job is available for the T10, and it's available in yellow black. And the yellow is so yellow, it makes the T10 look like a giant freaking cheese block. Chig, you need to come uh -oh. get this livery. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> that aside, Oblivious, how was your week? Well, Bloom, I you know, I kind of think that FDEM's point of sale vendor issue that's prevented you from buying arts all this time is all associated with the new math. Yes. But anyway, with the new let's, see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Real life, uh, the wife and I celebrated our forty fifth wedding anniversary. Holy crap! Congratulations. Nice. And yes, I do realize that uh, we've been married longer than a lot of the commanders I fly with. You've been married uh, have been alive. Nick, and I'm one of the old ones. Longer than me. <laughs> yeah. In game. Yeah. So I said I've been procrastinating a lot on the engineering and, and it, re it really paid off. Now we've got the changes to the mats and it's quicker to get to engineers and it's quicker to do engineering. So. All of my daily flyers now have fully engineered SCOs uh, in them. And yes, I did sell off the uh, grade five frame shift uh, drives and didn't nice. even blink uh, selling that off. Um, let's see. And, and how did you get uh, all of your? How did you get all of your data? Did you go to Jameson's crash site or? I, you know, I've done Jamison, I've done Anaconda stuff, I've done uh, uh, the high, um, now I'm drawing a blank, on the um, commission they sites. I, I, I've, done, I've done them all to top everything off. Tell me about and, the emission sites. Is there oh, more shoot. data at the emission sites? Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, okay. high grade yep. emissions as well. There's a lot more crap there. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. been just farming the light proto heat alloy, whatever that yeah. grade five one is, and just trading the crap out of it everywhere I can. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I didn't know from last last time we talked going to the Jamison site, I felt like you were getting, you know, they've got they've got more locations to scan. And I felt like you were getting higher grade um 
uh, mats each time, but I didn't know if you were just getting a single or multiple. So I didn't have um, one of my little side programs running that tell, tells me how many you were getting. But I, I did read on the Discord earlier, one of our uh, commanders said that it felt like you were getting three times the amount of mat drops. Oh no! So you've got multiple. You got what? Uh, four more or five more different points mm -hmm. to scan at Jamison, and it seems like you're getting yeah. uh, multiple drops uh, on each scan. Because he yeah. he said he filled up with uh, just logging one time. I don't know how how deep he was to begin with, but he he maxed out with just one relog. So pretty nice. I know that's pretty impressive because you were typically getting with. Four, so you were getting about four times. So you're getting about twelve G fours and or twelve G fives and Ooh. about three G fours per cycle, um, and or well, so nine. So 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 twelve and nine each time. Um, yeah. When you were kind of cycling through, um, on average. I mean, there was some wobble, there was some variability, but that's basically what you were getting. Um, right beforehand so i mean if they're giving more hits per target in addition to the fact that you now have nine targets and you're only so you haven't like to cycle through it once that's pretty impressive but right. i mean I've, I've been in a couple of systems with a ton of emissive um sites and i didn't bother to even look and see if they increase the data yeah i might go and you know hit those um you know because they've been a couple they've been in a lot of our systems during wars Yep, yeah, check those, see what you see. Yep, I dropped in <clears throat> on a few of the, not the HGEs, the like encrypted emissions. Yeah. I believe is what they're called. And I noticed um, I would still only get a few, but it was more of a few than I would get before. Mm -hmm. And they were a better grade too, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, what else? Oh, and with few exceptions, I don't typically put experimentals on. But now I'm dropping experimentals left and right uh, throughout the fleet. I went and built, built two purpose-built uh, Titan Krites Ooh. with uh, all the experimentals that I'm now playing with in four. And, nice. Uh, already taking part in the first three rings. Um, had to knock some rust off. We can talk about that a little bit later, what that was all about. <laughs> and I had not been in VR in a while. And usually when I'm doing the BGS stuff and there's a lot of con a lot of talk going on with the teams uh, in chat, I don't like doing the VR. So I put the VR headset on for the first time in a while and got into the T8. And oh my God, what a cockpit. What a cathedral really? view you get out of that thing. It is, it is just, it's huge. It's very impressive. So if you got VR and hadn't been in the T8 yet, Go go to, go! Have a look. It's it's fantastic. And what are you doing with your T eight? Like what, what, what's your what's your build for it? Yeah, I was primarily using it for mat collecting. When I was out running around all all over the place, just doing mat collecting and shaking it out and having fun with it that way. Yeah. Uh, but I think I saw Volt uh, actually went into the Titan with his today. So that was kind of cool. There's a mad lad. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your did you guys get the Stellar or did you get the regular? I personally got the Stellar, but mm -hmm. I just got paid at that point and I make bad decisions. <laughs> That's all right. <clears throat> and because uh, I couldn't find anything in print on the Stellar loadout. And so I actually had to lower myself to actually watching a video to describe <laughs> it. I was like, come on, is there just like a list of what, what's, what the build is? I mean, and the build looked not bad. I mean, I I'd, pro I'd probably swap out all my hard points. Um, oh yeah, it's, it's not bad, not great. And the shield, it's a great place to start is what. Yeah, it is. yeah, and the shield, but I mean, and and obviously the docking computer. Um, but I mean, otherwise, looking at it, I mean, there's a lot less R and R that with the modules than I did with my Stellar um, Python Mark II. Nice. I mean, I, I, because I was going for a very particular build with my Python Mark II, which was a, you know, a frag mamba on steroids. Uh, but, but with the, uh, but with this, I'm like, you know, it's, it's, you know, already out, got all of the cargo, cargo racks that I need. I mean, probably, like I said, just the shield and a couple other things for the first one and the hard points. 
I'm not even sure which hard points I want to do, but I don't want to do size one multi cannons and a bunch of pulse uh, yeah. lasers. You don't yeah. want the ones it comes with, that's for sure. No, they're all turrets too. I'm like, what the cinnamon toast fuck is that about? <laughs> so. To be way, fair, on my T8 turrets actually do pretty well. But I sort of designed it around that philosophy. I'm not yep. using mine for combat as much as general BGS work with enough firepower to defend itself, you know? Yeah. I just like to make any NPC regret its life choices for interdicting me. So nice. <laughs> yeah. And that that's, was the philosophy behind my courier or my, not my carrier, my cutter. So I'm doing a lot of misspeaking tonight. So yeah, it's okay. It's yeah. been a week. We're all tired. Yeah. So, so oblivious, tell me about your build outs for your, um, two crates. Like what, what kind of crates did you build? Uh, so totally ripped off the AX folks, Meccans builds. Um, I've got rip off. Uh, one is, is uh, the bomber and the other one is a fighter. So the bomber is, is, uh, a shard, um, uh, an immune shard, uh, uh, cannon type. And the fighter is all multi cannons. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly convinced the shard. I'm, I'm scoring as high with the shards as I was with the missiles, but that, mm -hmm. that's I think that's skill mm -hmm. uh, more than the build at this point. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it. I can't say that I've noticed a great deal of difference because I've done every experimental that was in there, except it does it does run cooler mm -hmm. uh, than it was before I had all the experimentals uh, on it. Um, Until you fire your shards. Right. Right. But, but, yeah, but my story on... And my story on the Titan, uh, getting in there and knocking some rust off. I haven't done that in a while, so I had to get, get back in there and figure out what's going on. I've got this brand new crate that uh, I, I did the build out on and was, mm -hmm. worked on it for a day and a half and thought it was ready to go and got in uh, into Thor and uh, uh, made one run, flubbed it, uh, took some damage, fired off a repair, lump it, and was then looking around and then noticed, hey, I'm, I'm not getting repaired. Where's my repair lump it? Oh, it's just hanging out below my ship like uh, collector lump it. Why? Yeah, and, and yeah, I loaded collector lump it and bought a repair lump it on there. So, <sighs> oops. So much for yeah. attention to detail. Yeah, well, I had a little attention to detail story about related to that too. So, um, you know, some someone was posting a "How do I build a Titan bomber?" Uh, question on one of the Elite Dangerous Facebook um, pages. So I I cut and pasted a link to my Titan bomber, uh, and there's this guy, um, this guy John. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's from England. Uh, really good guy, really helpful. A little bit snarky in that way that he makes you laugh, and he was just like, dude. Why do you have turreted missile missile racks on your Titan bomber? And <laughs> yeah, and I was like, uh, is because that I didn't wasn't paying attention. That was the only is that the only kind? And he was like, no, you can get fixed once. I'm like, oh, that explain and that explains why I've been having such a devil of a time with firing missiles at the cores because I'm like, unless I lock on to the core, <laughs> target it. <laughs> And I can't target it because you have to kind of get close enough because everyone else is dumping their missiles in that I keep locking on to their missiles, <laughs> you know? So I'm just like, oh my gosh. So anyway, so I have to swap out a few missile racks before I go Titan bombing tonight. Um, there you go. But that was just kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, but then they were asking me about my 64, my, um, my size six cargo rack on my bomber. And I was like, well, the reason is because I didn't want to put a, um, Hull reinforcement because they're so heavy that it slows my ship down and I need it fast enough to get away from basilisks if I get interdicted or something. So I was like, there's a point where the speed is, <laughs> and, and I'm not going to, I just felt dumb putting like a size four rack in a size six because the weight's exactly the same. So I'm like, I'm just putting a size six because I'm just, that's where I'm putting my limpets. You know, it happens to be a slot. So, and he was like, oh, that actually makes sense. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, I know what I'm doing most of the time, but just not all the time. So, anyway, nice. so, so go bomb Thor 
if you haven't done it yet. There, it's about a third bombed already. Yeah, yeah. Sitting down nine ring six, about forty yep. percent. Nice left yeah. on ring six. So Lark, what have you been up to, man? Uh, not a whole lot. I've just been working and slowly getting healthier. We had some thunderstorms blow through the area to try and conclude this whole wildfire smoke and bull crap. Knock the um, dust down. Yeah, it knocked the smoke down. It dropped some rain to help with some of the fires, but they're still basically burning out of control. Mm. And the smoke rolled back in today, but I, we had fresh air long enough for my lungs to get a reprieve and remind me that, yeah, it is just the smoke. So mm. just have to wait it out. Um, in game, I have been just flying everywhere um they've been doing a little bit of warring for the bgs been doing a lot of trading for the bgs because i've been using that to break in my t8 and um but i just freaking love that ship not a great <coughs> excuse me not a great combat ship at least for how i fly in combat <coughs> but it's still pretty good more than enough to defend itself And how many tons of cargo are you hauling in it? Oh, goodness. 196, I believe. 196. So. Which ain't bad for a medium ship. <laughs> no, I mean, you probably got like a fuel scoop and a... Um, oh, yeah. I, I have them. some things that I could swap out for cargo, but I don't want to. No, no, that's totally on brand for you. Because my, my Python that I use for... Um, you know, medium, medium pad trade is 196. So when you yeah. said that, I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, but I mean, my thing is thin. I mean, it's got a tissue, a, a tissue paper shield, and I don't even think I have a fuel scoop on it. So it's only for, you know, trade yeah. that doesn't, that I'm not going to run out of fuel. I'm actually <laughs> liking the T8 enough with engineering being more accessible. I think I may take the one prismatic I have. It's a 5A. I may take it off my Crusader where it's been living and put it on my Type 8 instead. Um, just because I think it would give it way more shield than I can get out of basically anything else for that build. And with a Prismatic on there, since I'm only doing skirmishes it in anyways, I mean, that's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's perfect for that. I mean, if I ever decide, if I ever decide to go and pledge uh, to, so I can get Prismatics, which i not done in this game. I mean, my cutter is definitely going to be the one that gets a prismatic. Uh, I'm sure I'd buy a whole bunch of them and figure well, out. Well, if you I'd wait till next one. month, it might be easier to get a prismatic than it is now. So, <laughs> right. Or we might not ever be able to get one ever again. Or, or not, ever, yeah. ever again. Yeah. Mm, yeah, exactly. yeah. I, so. I think you got to go get one first, just to be sure. Just to be sure. <laughs> just to be safe. I'm, su I'm surprised you've done the number of conflicts in the BGS you haven't gone in prismatics because. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, so, I'm not a PvP guy, really. I mean, I have not really done a lot of PvP, uh, other than when people put a bounty on my head a few weeks ago. Um, <laughs> or when we were just trolling our, our good friend, uh, Butthole Jenkins, one night, which was a lot of fun. Oh, he Frick, is that was great hysterical. Guy. That was awesome. I love that guy. Um, but, you know, so, yeah, so I don't, so I never actually bothered to get prismatics because I'm totally a big fan of the buy weaves when it's coming for PvE. Uh, I mean, yeah, Trax turned me onto it when he kind of really explained the, the nuts and bolts of shield theory to me. I was like, of course, everything should be a bi weave for what I do. <laughs> you know, so um, I haven't bothered to get a prismatic, but yeah, for my cutter, for this T8, I mean, yeah, I think a prismatics would be a good idea. So but yeah, I was kind of opposite should... on the, on the, on the vet. It's, it's the, um, just the uh, prismatics. I mean, it, it's almost a, a forget in a CZ type of deal. That yeah. with a bunch of banks behind it. Uh, so mm -hmm. if it drops, I just I just hit hit the bank and come up. And I can't remember the last time I took any hull yeah. damage in yeah. in those environments. But yeah. smaller yeah, ships, yeah, I have I one on my Crusader. Smaller ones, yeah. On your yeah. Crusader, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. not even a really I... shield tanky ship, and it still works great on it. Yeah. Yeah, the only time I ever run into trouble in CZ is, is like when I leave a CZ and then I go back into the CZ and it's like 10 enemies spawn and there's nobody else but me and the 10 enemies and then like the loose screws NPCs finally roll in after like my shield's down to like 20%. 
<laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, oh, yeah. crap. It's so. the mega, it's the mega ship scenarios that'll do that for me when yeah. they, when they get, when they get crazy, then oh, yeah. Right. When those through. things get rolling, it makes a high CZ look yeah. like a walk in the park. Oh yeah. And then, then I got to be careful on managing those, those shield yeah. bags. Yeah. But it does and well. Think, yeah. And I think that's the difference is like, I mean, I guess when I'm doing wars, I'm just doing cranking out low CZs out as in a purely mercenary fashion rather than just like, oh, I enjoy the, the high CZs more because they're a lot more fun. Because they mm-hmm. take they take forever, and it's just like I just don't have that luxury of time. So I'm just trying to be as efficient as I can to contribute. You know, so nice. Yeah. Well, speaking of wars, incoming priority message. Squadron briefing. Alrighty. Well, our first piece of our squad upgrade is probably a moot point by this point, because by the time you listen to it, the war is over. But our friends in Terra Mater have asked for help with taking back their home planet, uh, the planet Terra Mater. Um, there's been a war going on, and uh, as I said, hopefully they won by by now. Um, and if they didn't, they can re-engage and we can all help next time. Because um, they asked us on day six or day five to help out. And it and turns out hopefully that... Hopefully I have the permit by then. <laughs> yes. And and Terra Mater is permit locked. So you need to unlock the permit. Now, fortunately, most of us have that permit. So most of us are able to help. Um, and our good friend Borked was uh, helping them out quite a bit. So thank you, Borked, for helping our good friends in Terra Mater. Um, and LTT... Five two five six zero. Oh, we are still going for control. Um, so let's push that influence in that system. There was some re- interesting resistance. It um, Anar have registered over fifty plus commanders at one point, and we took a slight beat down, not a beat down proportional to the number of commanders flying through. Um, so something was interesting going on, and I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I don't not necessarily sure if. The Grom bombs got mad at us, uh, or what's I going on? I personally think that it was probably related to something with the engineering changes, and maybe there was a state in the faction there that made getting a certain thing really easy, so a bunch of people dogpiled the system to get it. Yeah. that That's what I think, because that's been happening everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, the influence, I've, been, yeah. Go ahead. I've been watching the, the uh, BGS Discord, following it, and... Over the last couple of weeks, the chatter on that Discord has has really ratcheted up. So, I, and I'm I'm thinking the same thing. You know, the mats, the engineering mats for missions and so forth. I, it's I think it's had some interesting effects on the BGS, where a lot of people are going, "Oh, I'm being attacked," but no, it's actually just a lot of people doing more things that affect the BGS that uh, that we haven't been used to in quite some time. Uh, yeah. And uh, so we are rebuilding. Uh, we have three systems in Scroop space that we're trying to take retake control of. Um, the, and uh, we also are doing some preventive maintenance. So as Oblivious alluded to, um, HIP-4907 and Cole Yawa are probably suffering the same issue uh, where a lot of missions are giving away a lot of mats and there's a lot of traffic um, because it doesn't look sinister. It just looks like a slow drag of noise. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, when you see the preventive maintenance section in our orders, you know, that's just basically give us a boost in one of those systems, run some missions, get some rewards, drop some cardo, drop some bounties, whatever you want to do. and then there are several conflicts going on as well. Um, our war priority right now is V2161 Signy. Uh, it's a fight for second place. And then we are going to stress that stress test that system for control. Um, and then last but not least, Thor, the Titan, is vulnerable. So go seal club that Titan before it disappears because it's probably going to be gone by the end of the weekend, if not sooner. It's already one third done. So Jeez, details at least that's going fast. Oh, it is going fast. I mean, it'll probably be 50% gone by the time I log on tonight. Um, <laughs> I mean, details are in the standing orders um, or go to the loose screws faction channel in the discord. We always welcome new pilots who are interested in BGS. We love talking about it. Um, so come visit us and we're happy to put you to work if you want to be put to work. All right. And that's the squad update.
Good. All righty. So let's move on to the Galnet because there was an update just today, which I don't think I've posted in Bard's Lord cor- Lore Corner yet. So I should probably do that. You should. But, but basically, Utopia comes very close to, but fails to reinforce their research for the archive library. Um, I've read through the thing a couple of times, and it basically looks like, um, hey, we have some materials, though, and that is going to help our research. At least we aren't as much of douchebags as Lee Young Rui, <laughs> to which Lee Young Rui replied, I'm not going, quote, I'm not going to dignify such brash words from Pranav with a public denial, unquote, which means Sirius was probably in on whatever helped fail their CG in the first place, let's be <laughs> honest. And that's what's going on in the news. Apparently people, there's a lot of fans of the space hippies, but not enough to get that CG pushed through for them. Yeah, uh, that, I mean, was honestly- the, that was the yep. CG with just the... Uh, uh, the paint job for the ship, the bad 70s paint job. Yeah, I think yeah, that was part right. of the problem was yeah, Antal could only offer the paint job of, well, I mean, I found this on the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have uh, the Crypsis paint jobs for a couple of my ships, um, and I like it because it glows and it's emissive, but the yellow is just kind of there. I mean, nobody likes yellow. Um, I have the white one on my Crusader. It looks fantastic. Yeah, I have the white one on my uh, my Explorer Phantom, uh, and it's nice. it's fabulous. I have, I have a, I think I have a blue one or a pink one as well um, for my Crate Mark II when I um, transferred over from PC to, uh, I mean from uh, Xbox to PC. I had to spend a whole bunch of arcs, so I spent a bunch of arcs on paint jobs and stickers and. Nice. all that kind of good stuff <laughs> so so i grabbed a couple of the other uh, other crypsis colors um but not yellow um so i think that they were kind of stingy and i think people are very very cautious about donating mats engineering mats for a cg so it's got to be something good um, mm, yeah yeah like the uh like i have a dual engineered kill warrant scanner from a few years ago i'm not sure if you guys remember that um that 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 cg and it was um winters versus hudson and all of the fed necks and everyone who wanted a double engineer kill warrant scanner went absolutely bonkers uh and it finished it finished a little bit early and then uh the payouts were so good that a whole bunch of us were then going over and helping winters out just so before it closed just so we could get extra credits so um so you got to give a big reward um if you're going to get people to give away their engineering mats, even in the new normal of lots of engineering mats. So F dev, if you can hear me, yeah, you got to pony up. If you want to, if you want to go CG to go be successful. So. Everybody's going to get used to getting engineering mats a lot easier than they used yeah. to. Uh, uh, yeah. That, that, uh, trust level that's not the right word but yeah you know, I, I wasn't I, I wasn't about to let my grade five fsds go until it, it started to seek in and these mats are easy to get right. don't worry right. about it yeah you know, sell it so yeah yeah but i think the other thing is that you know they're really trying to with these all of these uh galnet news updates really hit all of the pieces of the power play puzzle um so you've got Antal versus mm. Yang Rui. You've got intrigue in the empire. We've got that stupid election where it's like, okay, can all gonna rate me in a year because I had an earthquake at my home planet. So I don't want to be president and help my people by being president. I want to help my people by like, you know, you know, digging through rubble. You know, I mean, total total winners. I think the only ones we haven't heard from at this point are Grom and Delane. I have a feeling we're going to be hearing from Grom any day now if we continue to push our efforts in. Uh, <laughs> five two five six zero. Oh. I mean, hi, Tommy. We cool. love you. Yeah, they were mad at us for not having a dedicated diplomatic cell for them, and they had full access to pretty much our entire Discord when we welcomed them in. And they're like, "What is this shit show?" And we're like, "Yeah, this you is think freedom, be, man." I was going to say, you think it would be too on brand to actually have a diplomatic? Diplomatic, diplomatic, 
sell for all of the factions, but call that the dunce corner. Oh, good. Would that be too on brand for us? <laughs> that would be very on on brand for us. <laughs> now, I prefer the glass nose. I prefer the, the openness. <laughs> you know, here we are. <laughs> Take us as we are. <laughs> You know, we don't, we're not that organized that so we create all these little servers for every single diplomat that we have. So, you know, I mean, uh, organized, what's that? We're just here to freaking have fun. If you don't like it, I mean, you know, the motto. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, so that's right. Galnet update, Thargoid war update. What's Go going kill on there? The yep. end. Do it quick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that's <laughs> that, yeah, brings right. us, that brings us to the dev news. The dev news. Is there any dev news? There was dev news today. Yeah, I saw this again while I was waiting for an elevator. Uh, popped nice. up on the Twitter. You know, and so it's just about Elite Dangerous. So it says from our, our friendly neighborhood dev people, Greetings, Commanders. We are thrilled to be able to give you the chance to get even more out of your Elite explorations at just about Elite Dangerous. We've partnered with Just About, which is some company, I guess, uh, to bring real bunny rewards to the Elite Dangerous community. That's right. Through their bounty system, Just About pays real money rewards for all kinds of content and contributions, such as your most epic screenshots, exploration stories, or battle clips. Uh, it's their way, parentheses, and ours, to recognize this brilliant community. In the last year, just About has paid out over $25,000 in rewards and is always looking for new ways to reward your creativity. There's loads more in the store over the coming months. So get involved now and start earning rewards. So my big question uh, is, can we monetize this podcast of ours? No, oh, I didn't even think about that. That's it's just about elite, you know? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm the capitalist. You're the commie. You know, you're the provental guy. So uh, it's know. not commie. It's hippie. There's a difference. Oh, well, you're so happier. Confused. I'm <laughs> so confused by this. <laughs> I don't know what, what it is. It's, it sounds like that they're going to be paying out money for like cool content. And I don't know how just about makes money on the content that they can afford to give people $25,000 a year in rewards. That's for exactly, uh, that's where I'm going is where, yeah. Oh, that, that's an up to thing. Yeah. And there's lots of fine print there. Um, just about as far as I know, they are actually a pretty good company. Yeah. I've hmm. heard of them through different Twitch streamers and stuff that I follow. And I've heard of charity work they've done, though that might have been a different company. It sounds like the one that's in my memory. Um, so, I mean, they are legit. And I think this is actually a really fun thing that people can either get involved in or just ignore and see other people get stuff. I mean, whatever floats your boat. Actually, I pulled it up. And it looks like... And it looks a lot like one of our... Um, Med medical bulletin board services except we don't get paid for that medical bulletin board services <laughs> so well, basically basically they post topics and so um you know share a screenshot of a planet seen from space and then a whole bunch of people post it and some lucky soul could get eight bucks um or hey, eight, 16, bucks, eight bucks or 16 reward points whatever you can get with reward points um you know, Thargoids and Factoids share a fun, elite, dangerous fact. And, you know, that closes for a week. So, um, how, tell us how to get into mining in Elite Dangerous closes in two weeks. Ooh, how long do you have? I could do this all day. Damn it, only $2. So, but, uh, but no, but anyway, so I don't think we can, you know, tap into our pod, podcast with this. All this but, stuff uh, is posted for free as it is so uh, yeah i'll hustle yeah. and do it <laughs> yeah i so. don't get it i don't get it either we're, we're a bunch of old farts what can i tell you <laughs> so. anyway <laughs> hashtag yeah. thanks man yep so that's what's going on in dev news which i was told about but completely forgot about again until just now <laughs> <laughs> yeah well what about zach's drop on X oh, and yes. other players. Yeah. So earlier, hey, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. So earlier in the week, um, Zach posted a tease of the next new ship. It is literally just a picture, and uh, I will get a link to put in the show notes, but you can also find this on Zach's Twitter. 
mm-hmm. of th- a ship in Hangar 7. The doors are half open. It looks like some people are welding crap in the background or otherwise making sparks. And the back end looks like it could be the bastardized version of a clipper or something. And it makes me think the next ship we're getting might be a Gudamaya. Yep. It was... Or a plot twist, and it's a Saud Kruger. (laughs) Yeah, so, I mean... When I saw that, all I could think of was thick new ship booty. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So now I agree with you. I think it's a Gudamaya, um, and I think it's a medium sized something. So my hope not a, a lot of people are not hoping a for an exploration because sort of the explorer ship would kind of kill two birds with one stone. You have a medium Gudamaya, finally, and a Gudamaya explorer. So. Yeah, and it was, and the cockpit would be basically a clipper cockpit. So, which isn't a bad cockpit, to be fair. No, not at all. But not a variant. Not oh, a variant. Goodness. Well, what is a variant? You know, I mean, so, it's... so I am going to take a different road on this. Just looking at the size, yeah, it could be a clipper knockoff, clipper mark two, whatever. What if it is a slightly larger courier? Could like be. a cur- like a courier, but a courier that's crate sized instead of a courier that's viper sized. What do you think of them apples? Would you I call that a new ship a comp- or a variant? We're heavily using air quotes in variant with the type yeah. eight. So I mean, yeah, yeah I, you know, and it's, with with the with the Python, okay, you could say variant, right? I couldn't say that with T7, T8. I mean, the the T8 is new. Very so. And well, if you look at Lake Lake History, talking, that tracks. They don't make variants. Yeah, Psychic was talking to Zach at at their little get together that they had uh, last weekend. I think it was, and and Zach said, told her specifically, it's not a variant. It is a new ship. So nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think variant is a term that they've been using loosely even to date. I mean, sure, the cockpits are exactly the same, (laughs) but a Python Mark II is nothing like a Python. I mean, it is, you know, it's a combat ship. It's it's a fertile lance. It's a mamba. It has more in common with those than it does with, um, you know, a a plain old garden variety Python. Yeah, Python Mark II is the cousin of the Fertilance and Mamba that they don't talk about because he comes from the other side of the tracks. Yeah, you know, and this, and the T8, I mean, again, you have the same, you have the same, you know, cockpit as a T7, but it is a very different ship from what everyone's been saying and how it handles and and everything that it can do. Um, So... You know, I mean, I think that whatever is coming in the pipeline is not <laughs> going to be like a courier, and it's not going to be like a clipper. I mean, we don't need another medium hauling ship. You know, but so will you know, its will its first name be shared with anything else in the fleet? If it's not Caravel or something else with a C, we riot. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might be like a courier explorer or a clipper explorer or something like that but um you know but i think it's probably good they should probably come up with a name like caravel zach are you listening yeah call it a caravel it's not too late sea names left in navies so yeah but uh but hate was the original to come up with the caravel apparently so i think that 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 would be really cool if they called it that but uh, and it's kind of frou frou enough for the empire, and frou frou enough for the for Gudamaya. So, to but, be fair, if it does end up being a medium Gudamaya ship, that is going to become one of the most flown ships in the galaxy overnight. When oh yeah, it comes out. Yeah, because people have been waiting for that forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just Me like included. we've been. Wait- <laughs> yeah, just like we've been waiting for a me- a real medium. Um, I, well, be- waiting for the Type Eight. You know, I mean, I've been, I've been waiting right. forever because, like, the T7, I'm like, really? It's a large, you know, a clipper. Really? It's a large? Come on. Like, okay, that was to someone who didn't know how to code back in the day. Um, both of those mistakes. But, uh, 
And I'm, yeah, I'm calling them mistakes, Zach. You know, I know you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Zach doesn't Don't hate listen me. for this. No, he listens to no. this. Are you kidding me? I mean, he's 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 kind of pacing back and forth, waiting for it to drop at like 3 a.m. in England. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's the highlight of his week. You know, what does Blooming and then Lark Shadow and Oblivious think about? You know, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, they they totally eat this up. So. To be Ooh. fair, I think he really did think the thick Thargoid booty incident was hysterical. Yeah, he just had to have a straight face during the whole right, thing. He exactly. in trouble yeah. with HR. That's a pro right there. Yeah. Do they have HR in England? I think they do, but I think they call it HR. Uh, I thought it'd be HR or something. H I. Something. Because <laughs> they overpronounce right. the H's too. So. <laughs> We're going or to they say the H like they do in herbs. So yeah. instead, it's Hazar. Yeah. Hazar. I think, I think Lave's going to kill us. Hey, look at that. You can almost get <laughs> Hazar out of it. Right. All right. Is everybody still freaking out over orbital lines? I don't know I, why anyone was freaking out over orbital lines. I think they look great. I haven't turned off. <laughs> yeah, there were, some, there were some folks saying you couldn't turn them off. I did do I some never, playing around with that. And if you have them turned on and you turn them off, go to turn them off, they don't actually, they basically freeze in place and don't resize as you move around through the system, which can make for some inter interesting scenery. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you leave the system, uh, the next system you'll show up in, the, the lines will be off. So the problem is just they won't turn off in the system you're in at the time that you turn them off. So I haven't seen that, and I've heard rumblings that that might just be a VR thing, nope. but I'm not sure. I've seen it in both VR and, and uh, flat screen. Ah, okay. Well, I haven't seen it, so, you know, maybe it isn't a bug. I don't pay enough attention to if I see them, so... <laughs> Honestly, I actually I start to get a little bit of vertigo if I don't have the orbital lines on. So that's one of the reasons I keep them mm -hmm. on is even just on the screen, I my brain <laughs> just goes, whoa, what's going on as I'm approaching a planet? So I need to have them on because it gives me reference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's just me. Yep. All right. And moving on to the community quarter... If you guys got nothing else. Oh, yeah, nothing else. All right. Um, Bucky Ball's still a thing. I don't know if a new race started. I don't know if a new Has race not. ended. Nope. I don't know what's going on. But no, go to buckyballracing.org.uk to get more info. Yep. New one hasn't started yet. The next one is Alex. He's working on it. Um, he hasn't Ooh, come up with an idea that he's happy with yet. There we go. How about... Hut Norbuckle race, buckyball race. That should be interesting. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Here's an idea, Alec. Get two Type Eights, land them both close enough that the forks are almost touching, and then have everyone get out on foot and run a little marathon on that tiny track you just created across the top of the T eights. Oh, gotcha. Yep. We can do it with SRGs. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> There's just sparks and flames flying off the mm -hmm. freaking chip. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. To be fair, though, it's a buckyball race, so that's probably normal. Yep. Yeah. And that's basically all that's going on in Community Quarter. Yeah. All of the elite YouTubers I follow, I haven't really had a whole lot of updates. Um, just pretty quiet at the moment, at least this week. I do want to put All a plug right. in for for CQC though. Um, I was uh, working some CZs the other night, and Volts reached out to me because um, he and someone else were kind of doing like one on one CQC, and uh, they dragged me into it. So we did some death matches, and it it seems to be working pretty good. Um, we didn't have any issues with it. So I had one funny menu thing, but but generally, like I said, it was it was really fine. So. Um, you know, I mean, more people do nice. CQC. The more people do CQC, the more, um, more it'll, the better it'll work. So, 
I, yeah. I have a better way to put that. The more people do CQC, the less of a chance we all have of getting paired with Musketeer. Oh, that's true. Too. <laughs> he wasn't there, fortunately. Uh, <laughs> Musketeer, if you're out there, we'd love to talk to you sometime. Join the Discord. I doubt he listens to us. That was probably shouting into the abyss. <laughs> Right. Oh, shoot. But I personally have nothing else except for Elites being stupid on my main PC, and I apparently couldn't podcast and play at the same time. I kept trying to lock up either Discord or Elite. I don't know why well, that let's was. Re- let's wrap it up. Yep. Yep. Let's get this thing out of here. So if you like the podcast, be sure to... Uh, Leave us a review or a like on your favorite podcast player. You can join our Discord by going to discord.io slash loose screws. And don't forget to head over to loose screws ed.com to find our merch store and get some screwy swag. Only the screwiest from us smooth brainiest people. We've got brick pint glasses. We do. So, so get, your brick fantastic. Pint, get your brick Get your brick pint glass while you can. So it's what brick, he would I need want. that for hot cocoa in the winter. <laughs> You can get a mug with it too, um, but I would not put in put hot cocoa in a pike glass. You wouldn't. I might. You might. That's, that's on brand for you. Yeah, true. But anyways, on with that. I think that is a podcast. So, say bye, everybody. Bye, bye, everybody. everybody.